Hey, what's up? I'm Derek Kirk with Effective Strong, and today I'm going to show you a really quick, easy way to roll a cue. I have a tutorial coming out on CG Shortcuts this Friday that goes in depth about dynamics. But in this tutorial, we're going to jump straight into just covering how to roll a cube very easily with dynamics. Real quick, I just want to say be sure to check out DerekKirk.net for all of my content and check out our courses on CG Shortcuts and my courses on Skillshare. All of these are going to be updated with new content as well with the new big changes with Redshift, so be sure to stay tuned uh, and check those out. Okay, so first thing we need is our cube. We're going to go ahead and create our center cube. We're going to leave it at 200, 200 by 200, but we do need to increase the segments. And we're going to go ahead and just say 50, 50, 50. And the reason we're increasing our segments is because we're going to use dynamics and dynamics use collisions to drive our rotation. We're going to use friction to make it rotate. And so having those polygons there is going to make our simulation run smoother and more accurate. Now we need to have a decent number across our floor or whatever you're going to roll it across. Next, we need to create a path for this to travel across. We're going to click our middle mouse button and go to our panels here and we're going to click our middle mouse button again into our top view and I want to create a path that just goes across our side wall here. So I want to use the spline pin which is over here on the left and I want to draw a straight line from one end to the other. And now for me to draw a straight line freehand would be almost impossible. So what I'm going to need to do is click this snap tool, enable that, click the snap tool settings and I want to make sure that I have grid plane and grid point checked. So now when I hover over this, you'll see it snaps to these points. So we're going to click right here and then click right here. And so now we have a perfectly straight line. And to get off of the spline pin, go ahead and just click off by clicking like the move tool or something. So now we have this spline running across our scene right here on the ground. So because our cube is 200 by 200 by 200, we know that we need to have our spline off the ground 100 centimeters and so that's going to put our spline right in the middle of our cube this way our cube is going to rest on the ground and be centered on our spline because we're going to use this spline to drive the path and direction of our cube so to do that we right click our cube we go to animation and instead of saying path which you would think is what you would want you want to use a line to spline Instead of this, we want to just simply grab our spline and drag it into our spline path. So you can see our cube here, and as we slide this slider, it's going across our scene here. But obviously it's not rotating or anything yet, but that's okay. So at frame zero, we want to check this little keyframe marker here. And then we're gonna go to the end, and we're gonna go to 100% and hit that keyframe again. Then we don't want this to have that kind of slow ramp up and then it goes and then it slows back down. We want it to be one constant speed. So we want to go to our window, our F curve, and go to frame all, click and drag these and select the linear line here. So now it's gonna be one constant speed from the beginning to the end. And that's gonna be what we want for this. Now what we can do is because our spline is a little longer than our scene here, we can just hit T and scale this in so it fits in our scene here. Make sure to turn snapping off. It's very easy to leave that on and it can be very frustrating. So we've shrunk our spline down and we see our cube going from one end to the other. Now we want this to roll. All we need to do to make this roll is right click our cube, go to bullet tags, go to rigid body. That's gonna put this little bowling ball icon here next to our cube. So this means it has rigid body dynamics active. So we need something to collide with because right now it's just gonna fall through the floor. So right now we need to right click our subdivision surface here, which is our floor, go to bullet tags and choose collider body. Now when we hit play, you'll see that our cube doesn't fall through our floor, but it also isn't moving along our spline anymore. And that's because the dynamics has overridden our animation, but there's a way that we can make this work. We simply go into our dynamics tag, go to our force tab here, and here we have this force attribute called follow position. And we can go ahead and crank that up to 10. Now when we hit play, you'll see that our cube is following our position and you can see already that it's starting to roll and it was that easy. Now we're getting this weird slide going on here in the beginning. And all we need to do to fix this is we need to take our linear dampening down and we need to go into our collision tab and make sure that our friction is set to 100%. And we don't want any bounce either. By default, the collider body is already set to 100. 
bounce is set to 100 as well. So go ahead and turn that down because we don't want it to bounce. We just want it to grab onto that surface and rotate. So now when we hit play, you see it's sliding and then it rolls. So if you notice that you're still getting some sliding, what you can do is you can actually increase your friction beyond 100%. So now it's going to be extra sticky. And so we increase that friction and now we get that nice roll right off the bat. We're rolling a cube. And obviously if this is too fast or whatever. The, obviously the only thing you need to do is adjust the animation speed of your position on your spline. So if we think this is too fast, up, it, up your frame count to 240, grab that, bring that up. And now we're going to have a slower And that looks a little nicer. Yep. There we go. That's how you can roll a cube. Now, if you want to, say, create a bigger cube, uh, all we would need to do is make sure that when you have your cube set to like 500 by 500 or 500, you're going to need to adjust your spline accordingly. So make sure this is set up to the radius point. For larger objects, you may need to adjust the friction because you have a larger surface area, so you may not need as much friction now. And the same as if it goes smaller, you may need more friction because you have a smaller surface area. But there you go. So if you adjust the size of your cube, you're going to need to adjust the strength of the fall position as well as your friction. But basically, you should be able to just go ahead and instantly roll the cube. Hopefully that was helpful. Be sure to subscribe and like and comment if this was helpful to you and ring that bell to get more notifications for more content coming out regularly. Thank you guys so much for all the feedback in the last few weeks. It's been a, it's been a lot. <laughs> it's been great. All right. Thank you guys so much. See you next time.